Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is Jeff again here. And today we have a special treat for you, a master class video. We don't do those too often. In this one here, we're showing you how to install a kitchen backsplash stone tile mosaic made out of marble. And we have a French stone pattern. Here you can also see a miniature subway stone pattern all on top of our granite counter. And then on top of that, we're going to show you how to install side splash tile on the side of the kitchen pass-through window here with a large 12 by 24 sized marble tiles as well. We're going to show you everything you need to know in order to install a kitchen tile backsplash like this on your project and all of the details you need, all of the techniques that you need to be using, and all of the techniques that you need to be avoiding. So let's hop right into it. Alright, so here's the backsplash tile, and uh, so this is the, we're using two different types. We're using this uh, kind of a French pattern here, and then we're also using this little miniature subway pattern here. And these are the uh, small polished stones. These are probably limestone. The problem with these is these are very loose on the page. We got these at an auction from a company that went out of business. And so what we have to do is we tape them on the front first, and then we flip them over face down here so that the front the you know the front surface the glossy side is completely flat and flush with each other every each one of the little tiles and then we're going to come by here and mix up some thin set mortar and we're going to back butter some of the thin set mortar across the backs of these tiles a real thin layer just enough to make it firm enough that we can lift these up as a whole sheet that way we're guaranteed to have like a, a fully solid sheet of mosaic tiles and the front ends of these are going to be nice and smooth and perfectly flat. So you can see I've done that here with, with the, this set of tiles here. And you, you just lift up the tape and you flip it over, lift it up by the tape, flip it over like that. And that's what it looks like before you tape it. See? So then we have to peel off this backing paper here and um, once we get this peeled off, then we can go ahead and put the thin set on to back butter it. Now we have a video that details this much more detail. We're not gonna go into that on this video here, but I'll put the link to that down below in our description here on um, how to deal with, with problem tiles, mosaic tiles that keep falling off the sheet, how to deal with those and how to get them, um, you know, from fixing the whole sheet to getting it mounted up on the wall. So I will put the link down below in the description. All right, so we're going ahead and we're back buttering the back of these tiles here. And we'll let these dry and once they're all dry, they'll be nice and stiff and they'll act as one plane, one sheet of solid tile. It'll be like a single tile instead of a mosaic. And so dealing with heavy stone mosaic tiles in this manner, I think is a lot easier than sitting there and trying to work spacers in between each and every one of them as you're laying them out. But you just got to make sure your back butter them nice and flat, like this. So here's all of our mosaic tile sheets. I've completed the back buttering of them. And they're just now drying and I'll let them dry overnight. So when we come back in in the morning, these will all be nice and stiff. And then these are the smaller ones here, the little brick mosaics the subway pattern. These are going to go directly behind the kitchen faucet on that six inch riser wall. Well, here we are the next morning and we have our tiles here, all nice and dried and cured overnight, nice and stiff. So you see why I went through all of this? Because now we have a nice perfect plane. So instead of a sheet of loose mosaic tiles, we have a nice solid single plane here. Now all we got to do is peel off all of the, the blue tape. And so there we go. There's the big reveal. 
and textbook. Look how perfectly flat these front tiles are. So now I don't have to worry about when I put these tiles on the wall, I don't have to worry about these individual tiles sagging and putting spacers in between like all the other guys do. And look, it's textbook perfect. If you look down that edge there, there's no lippage on these tiles. Okay. And you can see those bottom two I added on the bottom because the way the manufacturer made this, and this is really dumb, I'll never buy tiles like this again. Um, there was no straight edge all the way across on a either edge of this tile. It's all interlocking puzzle pieces. So when you're putting these across the bottom um, row, which is sitting right on top of your granite, you would have to glue in these other two pieces on the bottom. Like, no way. So what I do is I just tape them in ahead of time along with the others and leave these open puzzle piece spaces here on either side for where I know it's going to interlock in with the next pieces. So this makes it a lot smoother. This is going to make things go a lot better for us to have it, have it as a single tile like that. And, and here's the other piece here too. You can see it's just perfectly flat in a plane with no lippage. So when you go to field between adjacent tiles, it's just perfectly level there. Now you just got to come through with a little, uh, with your 5-in-1 tool and just knock all these little pieces off here, these excess pieces with the thin set mortar collected up here because this does have to be perfectly square so that the next adjacent tile that comes in here can fit in there and get in there where it belongs and leave you with an eighth inch grout line. And same here with on this edge here, we'll chip some of that down. That comes down real quick because it's only been overnight, so it's very easy to just chop those little things down. You want to get all these little blobs up, that one there. And as we scan this other tile here, um, I think that corner is fine there. That little piece has to come up, and we're okay on this side as you look down the edge. But, yep, yeah, this came out very good. I'm very pleased with this. If you look right down the line there, see? Perfect. Well, here you can see it is backsplash day, one of my favorite days. Because this is the day where the kitchen really starts to look like a finished kitchen. So what we've done is here's our sheets that are laid out here, ready to go. I've got a couple that I've started on the line here just to dry fit and see how they look. <clears throat> I also had to cut this one to go around the outlet there. So what we're going to do is start in this corner and go this way. At the same time, I'm going to start in that back corner there and go this way. And once th these two are finished here, I'll continue this course all the way up against it. It'll run across where the stove goes. We're going to put and mount this ledger board right here. It's going to go right here underneath the spirit level. And it will keep our tiles from sagging down the wall behind where the oven goes here. And then... Here's my subway tiles here, and these guys here are going to fit right directly under there. And remember, that's that little six inch wall, riser wall that we made here behind the, the sink so that the kitchen faucet, if there's ever any leaks, it won't go out into the patio like the builder originally had. He had this really dumb looking flat counter that went straight out instead of this where I built up this wall here okay so what we're going to do is have the French pattern tiles there and they will stop here in this whole area behind the sink we're going to switch to the subway pattern tiles and then it'll pick up again on the other side of the sink right there where you see the drywall that will pick back up to the French pattern tiles again Okay, there's something I wanted to point out to you here, and when we do kitchens uh, as part of our remodeling efforts, we always try to make sure whenever we can build our own walls here, or whenever we have anything to do with the walls, we try to make sure that they're true, plumb, level, square, the whole nine yards. So these right here that I just built with the dense shield, this is not drywall, this is dense shield tile backing uh, board which is very similar to um, 
to your uh, drywall. And so if you look here, if I put my spirit level up against it, you can see it's pretty flat all the way across. So I did a pretty good job making sure there was no waviness to the wall here. Unfortunately, though, the builder did not. So we had to mate up to this existing wall here. And because this wall here tends to kind of curve backwards a bit, you're going to see that as I continue on my spirit level there, you can see how far back the builder's wall leans there. It's almost a half inch. Not too bad. We can mitigate that with our thin set mortar because the bag says that we can trowel up to three quarter inch thick. So we may have to trowel a little more on the right side than we do on the left side so that we can have the tile kind of aim out a little bit so that we won't see any curvature. It'll be level with the front face of all of our other tiles here. And that's a big problem with walls because often in kitchen walls you get really wavy walls and in fact we were doing these exact same tiles in my friend's house a few months back and he had a doming effect on the drywall so not only was it bulging out left and right and waving it was going up and down that way and that was a brand new drywall that that his contractor had put in and we had to come in and tile on top of that for him and what a what a mess that turned out to be all of the leveling we had to do with the thin set mortar so let's get busy. Okay, so I've started to travel on the first bit of thin set here for the first tile that's going to go here. And I'm doing a half inch trowel. See how it's nice and thick? And notice how I go vertical too. So that way, if you go horizontal, they can sag and droop on you. This way here, you know, it's in a straight line up and down. And you always want it to be parallel. Don't do like the fools that you see on the flipping shows all these goofball contractors they get that come in and comb it in circles and they think they look cool because they're going real fast bzz, bzz, bzz. this is the way you're supposed to comb it according to the tile council of america it's supposed to be parallel lines so that when you push the tile into it the air has somewhere to go when these when these ridges try to collapse okay so that's what we've got here there's our first course done and we're going to set the first tile Okay, so I've got the first two pressed in now, the first two tiles there. And I just wanted to point out to you, remember, I'm using a big old uh, half-inch thick trowel. If you aren't using this method where I already pre-back buttered the back of the tiles and let them dry overnight, do not use a half-inch trowel because it's just going to ooze up through your mosaics. What you should use, if you're just using tiles on a mosaic mesh, all you need is about an eighth of an inch, three sixteenths at the most, because otherwise the thin set will come up and it'll ooze up through all of your tiles. So just remember that, okay? All right, so far this has taken about an hour and a half. A lot of, a lot is because uh, we're very accurate and we're kind of sticklers about making sure everything is level, plumb, and true. And so here's what we've got so far along that wall, and then we've done in the corner here we've started in the corner and we've gotten the first course of the miniature subway tiles done there so this is coming along really nice this is very very classy looking so we're going to continue on and I just wanted to make sure I point out to you that also when you're putting in these tiles here and when you first set them into the thin set mortar you want to wiggle them up and down as much as you can or side to side to collapse down these these lines here right so that you get a hundred percent coverage and bondage onto the back and you might even want to just um, sometimes what I'll do here even though we already back butter these and these are dry sometimes I'll put just a little skim coat of cement just to make sure that we have adequate coverage on here in adhesion okay and then you just Put it in place there and move it around and wiggle it around and make sure that it collapses so it should never be where you put in a tile and it goes way back so you see how these are all flush the front edges of each other are flush there that's because i put in enough thin set that when i set the tile in it kind of oozes back slowly you should feel a little resistance as it pushes back it should just go like like that so keep in mind on that and that way you're guaranteed to be flush on the front edge.
And you remember I showed you earlier how flat my wall was because I built it with the, the dense shield. So as you look at my four foot level going all the way back to the corner, even across these little subway pattern tiles here, you can see we're pretty tight in there. We're pretty straight all the way across. And that's what you want. You don't want to see waviness. You don't want to see gaps in between the spirit level there and the wall. Because that means you put them in crooked, you have a wavy wall. And likewise, as you look across this wall here, you can see we're pretty flat too. So that's what you want to do. Every time you put tiles down, you always want to make sure you're checking level from tile to tile, left to right, side to side, and up and down as well. So here's the front face of the tile and you can see it's nice and level. So that's what you want to always check that and make sure you have that. Okay. Every single tile that you put, you have to check level. I always check it in both directions. And then I check across several tiles with the either four foot or the six foot level to make sure. So just remember the front faces of these tiles all have to be flush with one another perfectly all the way across. And we do the same thing too with our cabinets. When we mount these cabinets here, you recall we go across the, you know, the tops of them and the faces of them and make sure that there's no gaps at all whatsoever. All right, so the backsplash is mostly installed. We just need to come back in the morning and cut up all of our little six inch, actually it's not even six inches, it's more like four inches across the top there. And you can see it worked out really nice for us here. And here's our transition from the regular French pattern to the subway pattern. So this is looking pretty good so far. And we'll come in in the morning and uh, finish it all up. Okay, so we've got finally all of the tiles in. I finally went around and along the top and got that last five inches or so across the top there. So all of our tiles are in and it looks absolutely beautiful. And I really like this idea that I came up with here for behind the sink to switch it over to these subway stone tiles. It's the same material made by the same company. It's just a smaller subway pattern. So it's kind of cool. It gives you a little bit more defined space of the sink area there. So now we're going to clean off the tiles real quick here and start grouting. This would be a perfect time if you haven't already to hit that subscribe button down below. And once you hit that subscribe button, you'll see that little gray bell. Click on that and that will alert you to every time we put in a new video so that you'll never miss a video. And also if you like our video here, you can click on the thumbs up button down below. That lets us know that you like us. And any questions you have, please enter them in the comments down below, too. Okay. All right, so now that we've got all the tiles in, um, what I come and do in the morning after it sets overnight is I get my scouring sponge. This is your typical yellow and green scouring sponge that you buy in your grocery store. And I use warm water, bucket of warm water, and I just get it moist here. And I'll take it and I'll rub it in a circular pattern on the tiles here because you're always going to get these globs of thin set mortar that land on the tiles after you're done. Uh, you just can't help it because, you know, here you're holding tiles with your, your hands and, you're, and even if you've got gloves on, you're getting cement all over the place and you're tracking it on the front face. So it's important to get all of that off and just scour it and scrub it. And the best way to do it is I come by and I go up and down with my hand there and just feel the whole surface of the front of the face of the tile. And you shouldn't feel a single grain of sand or anything. If you do, if you feel any little rough areas, you just don't want to get it all. So it should take you about 20 minutes to do the whole kitchen. And if you have a partner working with you, that goes even quicker to have two people going at it at once. So here's our helper, Kristen, working with us too, to help What's speed up, things along. YouTube?
All right, so now that we've cleaned off the counter and vacuumed everything, we're starting again with another round of blue tape, and we'll cover up the counter to protect it for when we start. Okay, so now we're going to use this tool here. This is a, a grout scraping tool here. Uh, that, this scrapes out your grout channels. So it always happens when you're tiling that you're going to get thin set mortar that oozes up between your tiles. So if we come around here and look here, you're going to see here we have some globs here. Here's a, a sample area right here. And when you grout, your grout, um, you want to have 65% of your channel open to be able to put grout in. That's typically what the manufacturers want you to do. And then you'll see a little other globs over in here, like on this one. Uh, the, there's some. So we're just going to take this tool and we're going to go around. But this is how we, we operate it. You put it in here and you just very gently go back and forth. You know, and, and you do it very lightly. If you have to put, use any pressure, you don't want to use too much pressure because see how it gets stuck? And what happens if it gets stuck? You're going you're gonna to force it and you're going to end up scraping your tile. So you just go back and forth, very light, just like you're brushing your teeth. See how I've got that nice and clean? And then sometimes I'll use it and just clean out the intersection there a little bit as well. And that's really all there is to it. You just go around your whole wall and inspect, and wherever you see the need to, you just give it some scrapes there and clean out that channel. Okay, so right here you can see there's a couple globs here that we need to get out. Because this whole channel, you want it to be as clean as possible. So I'm going to start right above it and just clean it. Sometimes you just do a long backwards even scrape and that cleans it out too. Just like that and that's really all you have to do. Alright so now that we've scraped out all of our grout channels, now we have the brush attachment that we put on our vacuum and you want to go ahead and you want to vacuum every square inch of this wall up and down and all over like this, scraping all of the dust and dirt out of there and vacuuming it up and sucking it up. Because you want this to be nice and crisp and clear and clean and dry and everything for when you go to put the grout in. You don't want any contaminants in there that are going to keep your grout from sticking. Today we're going to be using this brand new grout mix that I'm experimenting with. So I was at the store the other day to get some grout here that we're going to do here on these tiles. And normally I was getting the uh, Caracolor, but this time they had another one here called the Ultra Color uh, Plus FA, which means fine aggregate. So apparently this mixes quicker and you can also, uh, because it sets a lot faster in three to four hours, you can have foot traffic in three to four hours using this. And this also has two key ingredients and features to the, I think, that differentiate it from the other Mappy grouts. In this one, uh, there's two of them. One is the drop effect, and what that does is it sort of has its own built-in sealer, but I'm still going to use the uh, maximizer, the grout maximizer, to mix it with instead of water, just to be sure. So also, this has the, uh, the other feature called HCT, which is hydrated cement technology. And this solves a couple of issues that have always plagued us with grout and that is color mismatching and effluence so that that technology eliminates both of those two two problems you know the efflorescence there and the, the discoloration and you know if you're using multiple bags you should mix them together anyway to get them more uniform before you you uh, go ahead and make your batch all right so let's get started and let's see how it looks okay so we are ready to mix up our grout and so what I like to do is I always keep a vacuum cleaner. You see I have the vacuum attachment right down here on top of the bucket. So I always keep the vacuum on around the corner so that when I dump in the contents from this bag into here and the little dust starts to come flying up, it'll get sucked right into the vacuum. I'm a big proponent of doing dust-free work in our environment, okay? So what I have here is I use the grout maximizer and I got a quart of it here. So I'm going to start with a quart, and you always pour 
the liquid in first, whether you're doing water or whether you're doing some type of grout maximizer or sealer, you always pour that in first before you pour in your grout down here, otherwise you're going to get clumps. So now, we're going to cut open the top of the bag. And what I always do is, you, know, you want to follow the instructions really close. What I do is, I pour in most of the bag, but I leave a little bit in case I have a, to do an emergency like the next day, an emergency patch. So, and you should be wearing a mask, but just for the clarity of this video today, I'm not going to wear a mask. And you can see here the, the, dip, the vacuum is doing a pretty good job of sucking in all of the dust there. So it's going right into the vacuum. Then. All right, so now I have my paddle hooked up to the drill. And we're going to start mixing now. Okay, so now I'm going to let this sit for two to three minutes. This is a process called slaking. And the instructions on most grout will tell you that you want to let your grout slake for two to three minutes. Um, actually, most of them are five to ten minutes, so I'm already liking this grout better than the other grouts. So the reason why you want to let it slake is that's when all of the chemical reactions complete. So it needs time for those chemical reactions to complete with this mixture here. It's a very important part of the mixing process. And then once this is done, the instructions here tell us to mix it for another 30 seconds. Which, again, I like this better than the others because most grouts want you to mix it for another two to three minutes afterwards. So everything about this grout seems to be faster. Okay, now that the slaking process is done, we're going to mix it up again for about 30 seconds or so. That gets it ready for use. Okay, then I usually rinse off my paddle in a bucket of water. And we'll just wipe off the rest. All right, so these are my tools of destruction here for whenever I'm grouting. I always have my gloves on, because man, let me tell you, grout will dry the heck out of your skin. It'll be very uncomfortable for you. And I, this is pretty much my only other two tools here. I use two different grout floats here. And uh, sometimes when I'm doing mosaic walls like this, I get fed up with trying to get it to stick, stick on the wall, because normally you'll get a batch of it and you'll just try to wipe it up the wall into the grout joints like this at a 45 degree angle. The problem is, is going up the wall is always very difficult and sanded grout is even worse. Today we're using unsanded grout though because sanded grout is not recommended for a highly polished surface like these tiles here that you see. And these are expensive polished limestone. These were $15 a sheet. And so you don't want to damage them with a sanded grout. So this grout here is unsanded. And then we use a bucket of water, as you can see right down here with a sponge. It's got to be crystal clear water. And we'll use that afterwards in about 10, 15 minutes after we apply the grout here to go ahead and uh, after the grout sets a few minutes to clean off the grout. So let's get started. So what I do is I reach in and I scoop in and I grab uh, just a little bit. I'm going to try a little bit just to see how it looks in one area. So if we come around here and look. What you do is you just go up here at a 45 degree angle to the grout lines there. Sometimes I'll come in from the side too. But you know, I usually go in at, at, uh, at an angle across. You don't want to go up the grout line like this because all you're going to do is force the grout in and then back up and out. So by coming at it at a 45 degree angle to the line, you're forcing the grout into the channel instead. So this grout is it's a little bit liquidy, and it's, but it is behaving. And just remember, when you, you're going to get a lot of it that lands on your protection paper or your cardboard there. And just make sure to get all of it. Okay. Now let me show you a secret too. This is where I think a lot of people get it wrong on the grout. So see how we have the grout all over the, the front face of the tile there? What I do is I come by at a real steep angle with the rubber and scrape all of it off. See how it gets like almost all of it? And you'll see how much you're left with, too, by doing that. And you can just put that right back onto the wall and in the next little section here. Okay. And you want to make sure you get all the way to the edge. You don't want to be grouting and then find out later that there's a opening right at the very end. That's where I think a lot of people miss as well. 
And we're going to come back and grout. Uh, not, we're not going to grout. We're going to caulk with a sanded siliconized caulk that's color matched to this. This is the biscuit color from Mappy. And so that will help us out also. And this is pretty much how you do it all around the water. Um, sometimes, like I mentioned before, that's, this is one method I'll, I'm showing you here. The other method that I sometimes use, which is easier, is I'll just dip my hand into the grout myself and I'll just take it and rub it around the wall. I can get it in there quicker and easier than just messing around with the grout float. See? So sometimes that works easier, especially when you have to reach way up high underneath. And that's pretty much all there is to it. It's not that hard. You just got to make sure you're being thorough and try to scrape off as much as you can when you're done. So now that we've got the grout pretty much on the wall here, uh, remember that when you're doing a 24 inch section here, depending on how long it takes you, you're almost 10 minutes in by the time you reach the corner here. So you're about ready now to, to come in and um, go ahead and, and do the initial washing and shaping of your grout lines. But So don't do the mistake that other people do. Don't grout all the way across the wall and then come back, okay, because you've waited too long. This particular mixture says that it, it sets in 15 to 30 minutes, and that's typically what most grouts tell you. But I have found over the years that <clears throat> it dries a lot quicker than that, and it can be really hard to get it off. So we're going to see right now, we're at about 10 minutes in, and we're going to try it and just see. So right now, yeah, it's just coming pretty easily. And you want to, I usually go around in circular motions, because I don't want to scrape it I don't want to try to go up a grout line and scrape it back out. Now see how, um, don't worry that you're going to leave a, a haze on the wall because once this sets up, I like to come back a couple of hours later and hit it with a, just a very damp cloth to make sure that there's no haze left over for us to have to clean off tomorrow. So this first washing off, you're not worried about getting every bit of grout and stuff off of the, the tiles and everything. You're just worried about shaping the individual grout lines and any massive chunks or collections <clears throat> like see this area right here there's a big collection of grout right there so i'm going to wipe that off that's what you want to get off because that won't come off quite so easy once it dries the next day okay so we're pretty much ready here this was good here and i'm going to just start on the next section so work one section at a time I would go like so I'll probably do this whole section right here and that's about 36 inches there and when I'm done doing that section I'll go back to the beginning of it and start to wipe okay so now it's been about an hour and a half and I'm going to take this wet terry cloth you can also use a microfiber cloth those are pretty good too and I'm just going to come around and wipe in a circular motion get all whatever haze is off off of the tile there and the best way to tell you did a good job is to feel the tile afterwards and see if it's nice and smooth. And in this case, it's supposed to be a nice glassy polished front. And so we did get all of it off here. So this looks really, really nice now. Uh, my take on this is it is a fast drying and fast setting grout. So my recommendation to you is uh, this will only last about six feet or so of backsplash before it starts to get hard and you're having to work it too hard so don't mix more than half a bag at a time that little 10 pound bag just mix a half batch at a time and work it do it in here be done with it and then mix the second batch because it's going to just settle too hard on you after 45 minutes we were at the other end over here and i was working real fast and having to re-wet it a little bit and mush it in so you really want to make sure you're you're doing about half of your backsplash and then mix it the second batch, okay? Here we are the next day, and you can see this has worked out just very nicely for us. Look how beautiful that, that earth tone, biscuit colored grout turned out to be for us. So it's looking perfect, and what we're doing now is we're, I've taped everything up and we're getting ready to, to uh, do the caulk along all of the, uh, the corners and everything. And uh, just wanted to point out to you, uh, you know, some experts and contractors uh, that really know caulk, they usually tell you not to use tape. 
And they have a good reason for it. Their reason for not using tape is they claim when you peel the tape up, it's going to leave ridges. Okay, But I'm a lot better than most people at this, so I don't leave ridges. And the problem is, and, and this is the, the most common mistake I see people make when they're caulking, is they'll glob a huge amount in here thinking, oh, I've got tape, and I'll just go and do a huge amount. And yeah, it's going to leave it all piled up on the tape, so when you peel the tape up, yes, you're going to have ridges. What I do, and I'll show you in a minute, is I do a very narrow eighth of an inch bead of caulk and just run it deep into that corner. So when I come by and tool it with my finger like this, it's just going to spread it out real thin. There won't be enough here to leave a ridge at all. And uh, so if you look real close at our, at our tape, we recommend about an eighth of an inch reveal line there. You don't want to come into your kitchen and see this big old half inch thick you know thumb sized thing of caulk going up the, the corners there. And I'm also going to do these outside ridges here, uh, these edges of the tile here, where it meets the drywall. We're going to do these two. And we're doing it up underneath the counters too, so I've got tape on the bottom size, bottom side of the, the cabinets here. See where the tile meets up against the bottom of the cabinet. So we've got tape in there too, because you don't want to leave those exposed. Under the microwave, well, there's really not a whole lot you can do there, but we are going to fill in some of these cracks first. And what we want to do here is the builder of the cabinets gives us these strips of like molding that we can use. So we're going to cut some of this and just glue it to the top there. So if I come back over here, we're going to cut a strip that goes all the way across and we'll just glue it there so you won't even see any of that seam. And then coming back over here into this corner here, where we've, you can see we've got the corner all taped off and ready to go. And same thing up under the counters. And then over here at the granite, we have it taped off because you can see right where the bricks meet underneath the granite, there's a little bit of a gap that needs to get filled in. That's pretty hard to fill in when you're grouting. You can sort of do it, but it's not gonna be thorough. I usually just prefer to do it with the caulk. It's a lot quicker. And then coming over here to the corner, you can see we've done pretty much the same thing. So let's get started on the caulking. Okay, so here's the caulk that we're going to use. It's a biscuit colored. And this is made by the manufacturer to exactly match the grout. So we're using here, this is the unsanded, so that's how you can tell because it says Caracalk U for unsanded. It would say dash S if you were using sanded. Now I could have used either one here, but I decided that since we were using the unsanded grout on the grout lines, that it makes more sense to use the unsanded caulk here because it'll match the texture better, I think. And so while we're on the, the subject of the these grout lines, I just wanted to point out to you, um, if you can see here, we're dealing with 8 inch grout lines here. So when you have an 8 inch grout line, you can either use and um, an sanded grout, or you can use an unsanded grout. So the eighth inch is the dividing line between which one you could use. If you're going less than an eighth of an inch, you have to use unsanded. So a sixteenth of an inch grout line, you must use unsanded. Although on one of my projects a few years ago, one of our tiling installers that we were uh, that was helping us, uh, I saw him use sanded grout on a sixteenth inch grout line, and he got it to work. So, but. Typically, that's what you do. Anything an eighth of an inch or under, you can you use uh, unsanded. If it's an eighth of an inch or over, you can use sanded. If you're right directly on an eighth of an inch, you can go either way. And the other mistake that I see people make a lot when they do caulk, I mean, you wouldn't think that there's much of a science to it, but there really is. When you cut this thing, don't cut it down here. Don't make a big old quarter of an inch cut. I cut this thing as small as I can possibly cut it and still get the poker rod to poke down into the thing. So that means I'm at about an eighth of an inch or less on my size here. So that way I'm not shooting out all sorts of uh, amounts of caulk that's just going to get wasted. And if you weren't using tape and you put caulk down here and you, and you start tooling it with your hand, it's going to snow plow up the wall. Now you're going to leave ridges, the same ridges that they told you not to use the tape for, you're going to leave with your fingers. So that's why I prefer to use the, the tape. Uh, nothing beats the absolute perfectly straight line that you get with tape. 
and if you tool it down thin and properly with your finger you will not have ridges and before we start I just wanted to remind you when you're putting down the caulk here don't leave the tape up you got to take it down like within minutes because what happens is the caulk will start to set up and if you're like five minutes down the road it could start to get a little bit rubbery on you and if you peel the tape up it could peel some of that caulk with you so you got to make sure to remove the tape right away in fact what we're going to do here we're going to do this in two sections we're going to do this area first and then stop after we've tooled in the caulk and then we're going to peel off all the tape like instantly and then we're going to come back over to this section here and do everything over here and then we're going to peel off the tape when we're done and get it right into the trash don't set it down on the counter because it's going to have wet caulk on it and make sure you have plenty of paper towels here ready to go all right so i just wanted to show you here how big the hole is that i made see i i just made a, a cut across a very small part of the top of this tip here because that poker rod that's right there on the side of the caulking gun it has to be able to get in there right so I made it just big enough to barely fit it all right so you can see I'm coming in and I'm just doing a real thin bead see that nothing big Sometimes I do it so thin that I have to come back and maybe hit a little spot, but I don't want to put a whole lot down. You just need to cover up the corner. That's it. All right, so I'm stopping here just for a second to show you. I've got just that little bit of bead going all the way across from the back of the counter to the front. So we're just going to come over here and tool it in. See how there's not a lot there? And that's it, that's how it's supposed to look there. So now when we peel this tape up in a minute or so, once we're done with the rest of this section, you'll see there won't be any ridges. Okay, now I'm just gonna do this last section here. Just tool it down in there, nice and tight. And here we are. So this whole section took about five minutes or so, and we're going to pull off the tape now. And so there we go, you can see our nice clean lines here as we go all the way across here. And then we look up underneath where we caulked along where it meets the bottom of the cabinet. Looks nice, no ridges. And that's the way it's supposed to look. Now when we come back over here and look at the front edge here, what we did was we smoothed the caulk out onto the front edge there. See. And we have it in the corner there, of course, too. Now, some people may not like this raw-looking edge. So, what you can do, too, is you can get these straight pencil pieces and put them right... You can mount them right alongside it, and it disguises the edge and leaves you a nice, clean uh, pencil piece. So, we're going to see if we can do that. Uh, we have some different pencil pieces we can try, and if we like the look or not. So, we'll take a look at that later. But now, now that this section is done, we can turn our attention to the other side here by the sink. And let's get this done now. And here we are on the other side by the sink. And we're peeling off the blue tape, and you can see it just looks nice and perfect straight edge. Can't get any better than that, folks. Now I want to show you this little section right here. Notice how you got a decent looking bead coming along here and then suddenly it thins out just a little bit on the corner there, right? So we're going to, let me try to zoom in tight to it here. We're going to come in and put just a, a, another strip of tape down and try to get a little bit more caulk into that corner there to make it match the thickness of this bead of caulk here, okay? And then if you'll notice here, a couple of a couple of our tiles here are going to need a little bit more grout. So remember I told you when I mix, whenever I mix up the bag, I don't do the full bag. I always leave a, a little bit in there. This is why you leave a little bit in there for these little things that show up later. That way you don't have to run back to the store to buy another bag just to do a couple of ounces of powder out of there. 
And I'm not worried about the color mismatch. We do this all the time. I've never had a color mismatch. With the Mape grouts, everything is pretty good. And this particular grout, as you recall, is made just for this issue of color matching. All right, so there's my tape in place here, a small strip of tape here. So we're just going to come in here and lay down a thin bead. Remember, nice and thin. You don't need anything over, over dramatic here. And that should do it. And we come right here, and we're just going to tool it down. And when you're tooling it down here, remember to aim more towards the tape side than the wall side. Don't let it pool up your finger and uh, let it snow plow onto the wall. You always want to kind of mash it more downward than upwards onto the wall. See that? So now when we peel up the tape, look at that. See, now it's a nice looking bead. Now it pretty much lines up with all the other uh, rest of the bead that we have going down the wall. Now for tiling that pass-through window from the kitchen to the patio. Uh, this is the side splash tile we got for this. Now this is really nice stuff as you can see over here. This is some very nicely polished marble. Uh, this is about a half inch thick. Really nice, ultra, ultra classy. And this will make a nice look to the side of the window there. And it will pretty much match the existing tile that we've got there. Um, at least in color and everything. It won't be the exact same, but it'll look very nice. And we wanted to get these larger tiles so that we could go up the side of the window with only a couple of pieces. All right, so I've taken the first 12 by 24 piece of marble there, and you can see I've cut it up, and we're dry fitting it here. And it looks really good, so you can see why I got the large pieces like that. That way I'll have, all, basically there'll only be one grout line going up the wall here. I was trying to make it as full as I could get. Okay, so this was an exhaustive search to find this color of polished marble tile here that pretty much matches our existing mosaic tiles. And this is marble from Turkey. Very nice, very, very classy, very highly polished. All right, so here's what we're about to do here. I've gone ahead and back buttered the side wall there so we can get close to 100% coverage. And we've also back buttered the tile. And I used a much smaller trowel size. This is a quarter inch trowel size that I used here. Um, because what we have to do is when we put this tile up against the wall, we need it to go as close to the wall as possible. We don't need no big thick layer of of the thin set here. We want it to be nice and tight against the wall. And this is fine according to the um, Tile Council of North America. We're getting more than 85% coverage here on the wall. Remember, there's not going to be a load on it. Nobody's going to be stepping on these. But we do want to make sure that it makes real good contact when we put this tile up against the wall. All right, so here we are looking at our side piece marble there and you know from standing three four feet away you can't even tell where the seam is between these two because we did it with zero grout line so that made it look a lot like like it's pretty much one whole piece even though there's two pieces going up the wall there and coming back over here and looking on the, the left side of it same thing here a little easier to tell where it is you can sort of see it right there but there's no grout line there at least so this is looking really classy. That's it for this week's video. And if you like this video and you learned a lot from it, please give us a thumbs up down below and subscribe to us down below. And after you hit the subscribe button, make sure to hit that bell icon so that you can be alerted every time we release a new video. And we'll see you folks next week.